And welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. The podcast starting roster is Eric. Yo. It is Tom. With his keyboard. Also known as Heavy Fingers. Uh, we also have Tom's keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, have we, need to have, we need to have that sound wave of him and his keyboard always queued up. So whenever he types unmuted without knowing, we just like plaster that fucking image. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, so how was y'all's weeks? Um, it was good. I had a fine week. Could be better. Could, could definitely be better. Yeah, let's not hit um, on that, Tom. But um, any bird? Tom's green screen. <laughs> <laughs> any what? Bird. Oh, hold bird. on a second. I haven't seen Tom. Like turkey. Turkey bird. Turkey. Turkey. Do you have any turkey? I didn't have any turkey. I had ham. Uh, I had chicken. Does that count? <laughs> oh, that's close, kind of. We we had Thanksgiving casserole, which is stuffing, uh, peas, uh, carrots, sauce, like cream of chicken soup, chicken, like all mixed together. So it's just like this big pile of food that is roughly Thanksgiving shaped. It was great. <laughs> that sounds good. Hmm. Yeah, it does. I loved it. I will stand behind. Also, it. I have the coffee. Chicken is just smaller, better tasting turkey. I like turkey. I really, really love turkey. It's easy to screw up turkey. I'll give you that much. It is very easy to dry out a turkey, but true. When you get a good turkey, it's perfect. Nothing else like it. I mean, mm. I can name a lot of things that are better than it. Steak, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll take any cut of steak over anything of turkey. It, yeah, pretty much. I mostly agree. Even poorly cooked steak, I will take over most <laughs> forms of turkey. I'll take a, really? I'll take okay. a well done steak with ketchup over a turkey any day. <laughs> <laughs> well then, okay, them's them's fighting words. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much we just had pork, um, prime rib only instead of ribeye was off of New York Strip. And then um, sides and one bite peanut butter pies. Fucking love those things. Hey, nice. Meet him again. Yeah. And now we have two big ass bags of Reese pieces, which I hate because I won't stop eating them. Yeah, those are uh, a little addicting. Yes, they're just, but they're so fucking good. They're better M&Ms. Re yeah. Reese the, Reese's um, Pieces is a superior candy coated thing. They're substantially better than peanut butter M and M's. Like I don't uh, yeah. think it's close. No, it's not even close. Yeah, not even a little bit yeah. close. Agreed. Renee also made a peanut butter pie, which was fantastic. Mm. Hers um, looked great. It was it was weird. So we thought that it was too light on the peanut butter flavor, like too much sweet, not enough peanut butter. Mm -hmm. But then we let it set in the fridge. And something about that process, just that like hour or two sitting and waiting in the fridge, mellowed that thing out really well. So it had a really good peanut butter flavor, but without like so much peanut butter that it just dries everything out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you get, dare I say it, too much peanut butter <laughs> and it no, just sucks know. the moisture out of fucking about. everything. It no, but on an island. Like once in history. No, but I've that's had something David. that's so, so peanut buttery and rich that it almost gives me a stomach ache like you can only eat half a piece before you feel like you've got right? a brick in your stomach and you're gonna die yeah so uh with this it like it mellowed out it had the good sweetness to it and a really nice punchy peanut butter flavor but like without all the the bad parts of a super intense peanut butter flavor like it wasn't too rich either which was kind of nice mm. so my family used to do this and i'm wondering did you guys put it in a metal pie sheet or is it glass um you know i don't know actually never mind i that, remember that question was about to be stupid because the entire context is wrong ignore that i'm dumb okay fair enough can confirm eric, eric pretty dumb yeah yeah <laughs> that happened and also also i can confirm chat a1 over steak or ketchup for steak all the way yeah yeah for sure i'm a neither guy but um, like yeah. if if the steak is really if if it's a good steak, I don't need a sauce. But I'm I'm not above 
like dressing up some cheaper cuts of meat with some sauce. Totally. So, I that. I'm Sounds also a guy that even if it's a really, really good steak, I'm still dipping that shit in mashed potatoes. Well, hell yeah, it's mashed potatoes. And I will tell you, steak sauce, steak and potatoes is like a holy oh. triad of flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think I've talked about this on the cast before, but if you ever have like a baked potato, sour cream, butter, take your steak and dip it in that shit. Like the like the the baked potato with the sour cream, with the butter, it's fantastic. It's way better than it sounds, I promise. I think if it's food related, we've probably talked about it on the podcast before. Yeah, most yeah. likely. This is basically just a food cast with some video yeah. game talk at this point. <laughs> yeah. From time to time. It's hit and miss. Some weeks we don't, but on Thanksgiving, it could probably be assumed it's, it's going to be pretty heavy. Yeah. For sure. That said, I, I don't have anything else really to add. So. No. Yeah, no, it's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was fine. great. Yeah. The only thing I didn't have that I do want and I will be getting later because. You know, after Thanksgiving, all the Thanksgiving food goes on sale. I'm going to eat an entire pecan pie by myself. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try making I'm not a one. Fan. I definitely want to try making one. I'm going to at some point. Do the it. recipe looks really easy. Like, really, really easy. You put pecans in a pie dish, <laughs> and that's, that's it. Not, it's not that easy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's, Let's it. Do that's this. how you just, make a pecan pie. Just dry pecans in a, a shell of pie crust. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Nothing what else, else are you missing? Well, well, I want Tom's pie at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, a pretty good. Natural. What? Um, Scott's getting out there with the hot take. Uh, box stuffing is better than homemade stuffing. Agreed. I've never had homemade 100% stuffing. 100% agreed. I have. It's not good. I've always had... I, my family was always a stovetop family. Yeah. If you all don't... All stovetop all the time. If you don't appreciate celery, at least in my recollection... Fuck celery. The, home, the homemade one I had was very strong celery flavor. Uh, yeah. Because celery Fuck takes celery. over everything. I, like I just don't like celery. I'm not afraid Dude, to admit it. Celery is great to snack on, and then it's best served as a vessel for peanut butter. I think celery is best served as a vessel into the trash. Like, there's no redeeming <laughs> qualities to a you, piece of celery. You don't, you don't like, you know, cut up pieces of celery with, like, peanut butter filling it? No. Hell no. I like celery Dude, just by no. itself. <laughs> it doesn't even have to have the peanut butter. Like... Why Why would I ruin good peanut butter with celery? Celery is just paper and water put together. <laughs> I always say one. that about uh, green peppers. <laughs> I always say they're just crisp water. I green agree with Burb on here. Water. That's funny. Yeah, exactly, Burb. Like, I can just take a spoon to a jar of peanut butter and get all the benefits I would derive out of peanut butter and celery. <laughs> okay, and Tom, soup, celery, soup celery is not celery. Soup celery is different. Tom changes was, the entire thing. Tom was getting called out by his wife saying that there is celery in every soup she makes. Yep. <laughs> so either Tom okay. secretly hates his wife's cooking or. <laughs> well, there's a difference between <laughs> liking something as an ingredient in another dish and liking yeah. something by itself. Big difference. Yeah, like, OK, even even celery salt. I can get behind celery salt. But the act of like raw celery itself, that's not cooked down. Nah, mm -hmm. nah, not even a chance. Not even a wee bit. Not even a wee bit. No chances. <sighs> so, um, yep. I got to talk to an old friend this week. Somebody I hadn't oh, talked to you? in a long time. Yeah, Adam Pettigene. Irk knows Adam Pettigene. Yes, I missed Yeah, Pettigene. we had a little chat this I've... weekend. Uh, what'd you guys talk about? Uh, well, he has a podcast, actually, called Fandomonious. Oh, really? And, um, they had, uh, Two out of the three people were busy that weekend, so me and Adam had a little chat for his podcast, and it was a great time. Neat. Yeah. How'd that Everybody, go? It went really well. It was nice. It was nice to catch up and, and just have a chat. Um, if anybody is looking for a, a podcast to listen to that isn't us talking about video games and, and food incessantly, uh, the Fandomonious podcast, it's, it's just like a pop culture podcast. They talk about anything like movies, music comics whatever 
Good group of dudes. So, so you're saying they're nerds? They're nerds. I, I can at least nice. for one third of the group say good dude. Yeah. I don't know the other two per se, but let me some pedaging. <laughs> and uh, yes, I would rather have cold spaghetti out of a fucking vat on a ping pong table and wake up the next morning with spaghetti sauce all over myself. <laughs> I would eat it that like all day. I, I'll be honest I with you. Like I'll be honest with you. We talked here. about we talked about that story on the podcast. <laughs> Sorry. Eric. No shit. <laughs> yeah, that got brought up. Yeah. yeah. So if you're what? wanting backstory or clarity on what's being discussed between Adam and I, go check out <laughs> Fandemonium. Um, it's oh a good story. Back in the right, days well, when Adam I mean, Pettigy and Adam Jordan we and I the, were in a band. We can do the story again here if you want. No, no, no. That, that sounds like a teaser for, uh, for the Fandemonium <laughs> podcast. If you want to hear the Irk ping pong bat spaghetti story, <laughs> I guess, what because I don't even know this. <laughs> And check uh, out the Phantom Audience podcast. Indeed. Anyway. Yeah, um, I'll have to check that out. I have not. Yeah, I feel bad. No, about Bird, that. why did you redeem Hydrate? You knew I had the kickoff. Because you need to drink. drink That's more. true. All right. Drink water. Hydration's the right, key there. to victory. I got it. So, were you guys up to anything this week other than Thanksgiving stuff? Uh, a very little bit. My, my gaming week has mostly just been vibing out with Rocket League uh, and in between frustrations of Dota. Yeah, I've actually think I've played, unless I was playing single player game, I think almost everything I was doing was with Tom for the most part. Nice. Like I've played a you. shit ton of shit with Tom. You're on the grind. I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, 72 PC is officially a um, platinum tier, which is the top tier guilds. Oh, in Dota. Cool. Yep. With only five of us, which how. is an, it's an indictment on how many inactive guilds there are in that <laughs> game. Probably. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Still top whatever. Um. Did we so. So Please. we're going. We're going to be plat right now. We're seventy seventh percentile. Seventy fifth is plat. So we're in plat right now. It just hasn't been confirmed, and or we don't get the rewards until next Monday. This Monday. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a thing. And also, I don't know if we hit on that. The guild system for Dota 2, Valve, love it. Build on it more. Yeah, that's definitely they're, cool. They're doing kind of some stuff with it that I wish that Rocket League would do with the clubs. So, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I love the guild-specific challenges. So, um, like last night, we were trying to tackle this one that was, you know, deny so many friendly creeps. Um, or, um, let's see, what was it? It went to, like, slow down so many heroes with, like, movement speed debuffs for however many seconds. So it incentivizes your whole guild to start playing, like, stun-heavy, slow-heavy characters, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah, um, I concur with Tom. A lot of Dota. Uh, Rocket League, Tom and I have been playing a lot of extra modes. A whole lot yeah. of extra modes. On the hoops and rumble grind, it's snow day. It's snow day. I think so. Well, you actually, well, we're doing pretty good in snow day. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with our, our snow day performance. We might get Tom Diamond awards this season. Hey, I'm hoping. That's I'm awesome. hoping. That's fantastic. Um, I got, I've I got my rewards rumble. finally. You got champs finally. Yeah, I finally played enough to actually get the wins to get the rewards. <laughs> nice. I know you and I were both at like gold. Yeah. Which is way behind what we got like a week. Yeah, something like that. I think a week or two. Ugh. Hopefully get them. But yeah. I haven't been playing as much Rocket League. So I'm like, I'm falling behind on the wins and stuff. Yeah. It's easy to fall behind I mean, if you don't play. I mean, I don't want to say this, but I kind of do. I might have officially gotten myself out of like my Rocket League hole because I'm falling back into a Dota hole. I don't know if oh, that's no. a better or worse hole to be in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, Dobby I, I says said Dota up. is better and has a better community. It does sure? have a better community at this point. <laughs> I, I, I still feel that there's less assholes on Dota at this point. 
that's kind of amazing. Now that said, that said, Dota has done some interesting things with like community behavior scores. So this matchmaking system will try to put you with people who are roughly as well behaved as yourself. So if you're a fucking asshole, you're gonna get only fucking assholes for the most part. If you're a nice guy, you're gonna get paired with other nice guys. Yeah, and I'm, I think almost everyone except for Dobby might be the only one that ever gets things against him because he will um, aggressively coach people sometimes when they do really stupid things. And I like, say really hey, stupid, I mean aggressively stupid things. Like things that I would do on a near daily basis kind of stupid. That's the kind of stupidity we're talking about here. But yeah, um, other than that, like we're all top tier. And I think even he's probably top tier. I have perfect score. Yeah, yeah. no one reports him, but he's an ass. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that that's always nice. Like they pocket good with good, bad with bad. Yeah. But um, um, also um, to Phantomonious question about uh, Valhalla. I haven't played. I don't think anyone here has. Uh, my wife, Gina, has. Um, and it opens up into a good Assassin's Creed game after bottlenecking itself into a weird God of War game for the first few hours. That's so weird to me. <laughs> that is so weird. But it does get better, right? Yes, and it looks it looks just like the... Um, I shouldn't say just like. It's clearly Nordic-themed. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very similar to the other Assassin's Creeds after you get that out of that shitty like learn-how-to-play zone. And when I say other Assassin Creeds, I mean like Origins, um, the the recent three, not the OGs, but the reboots. So yeah, um, if you like those, definitely go for it. It seems like it's still pretty fucking solid. I can't remember the the last time I played an Assassin's Creed game. Assassin's Assassin's Creed game. Hmm. Hard one for you. Eh? I can't I can't speak today apparently, but no, I I don't think I played. Um, I think I played the original one, and then maybe part of two, and that might be it, honestly. I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. I loved yeah. the meta game to it. The idea Agreed. of what they were trying to uncover with the Animus and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I never played any of them through after that, but I heard that they got really fucking weird. They and got really stupid as gamey. shit. That's, that was always my issue, is that, like... And it seems like Ubisoft really loves to do this, where they'll get you with that story hook. And you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen now? And then they follow it up with absolute fucking drivel. It's like they get one writer, or like a nice team of writers for the first game, and only the first game, and everything after that, dog shit. And that's where, because the Assassin's Creed were one of the yearly games. It was just like Madden's and Cod's mm -hmm. where every year there was one. And then going into Origins, they took time off to rethink the systems, rethink how they wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And yes, it still has the Ubisoft puke on the map with the icons. <laughs> but the gameplay itself seemed more thought out. Um, people tend to love the reboot of it. Origins, Odyssey, there we go. And then now Valhalla. I just wish so, people would get rid of the pretense, right? Like. They don't add subtitles to a Madden game. They just say, hey, it's Madden 21. Same thing as Madden 20, but a new roster. Like, just say Assassin's Creed 2020. I mean, Assassin's Creed no, 2021. you can't just do well, that, it, though. They're all drastically different in theme. You got the yeah, Pirates so one, Assassin's you've got Creed the, 2021, the one in Egypt Pirates or something, <laughs> and then you've got the, the Norse mythology one. Assassin's Creed 18, Egypt. Like, all right, that's it. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go. Tom Logic. Assassin's Rocket Creed lost to New York. <laughs> like what? Here yeah. it is. Tom Logic. Rocket League is a uh, soccer sports game 95. Yeah, done. See? Super easy. Why don't you just name things what they are? Like Zelda 25. It's the same thing as the other previous 24, but this time it's on a new system and you have amiibos you have to buy. <laughs> game title that doesn't relate to any playable character 25. Okay. Yeah. Something actually new, 2020, which would be, I guess, Tarkov at this point. Um, I mean, sort of. First person shooter, 56. <laughs> no, um, we're getting down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Either way, um, <laughs> they're not all the same. I mean, there's more separation in the current three than there was the previous. So if you're thinking that 
Valhalla is going to be just like, well, Black Flag's a bad one, but Brotherhood, it's not. And none of them are like Black Flag. Like, that's a whole different monster. But for Black, Sa Black Flag, yeah, Black Flag. I think it was Black Flag, yeah. Okay, what the fuck's going on with this Q? Um, no, let's double, try double let's Q. Double it. Yeah. Double yeah, Q. Let's double this shit. Anyway. So, uh, I, uh, I gotta say, I had a lot of fun with Dota this week. Like, we had a couple games that were really close. We had no business of winning. Came back by the skin of our teeth, and that was great. Again, filled with those games where I'm questioning my very will to live. Um, so yeah, Dota is still Dota, uh, which is great. Yeah, I guess. It, it's great. It, I'll it, take it your word for it. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, I'm like, only would, do that. Don't yeah, go any farther. I have this. zero interest in Dota at all. I mean, I mean, MOBAs as a whole. Like, this is further than Dota. It's League of Legends, Smite. This is Heroes of the Storm, all that. Yeah. It takes a, It's a certain type of person game. There's people some that games that are... There's certain games that are almost universal. Like, okay, people can probably get enjoyment out of this. Or at least most people. MOBAs are not that. Nah. True. It's kind of like Tarkov, where it's like, not everyone's going to enjoy that type of game. For sure. But those yeah. who do are probably going to get pretty fucking deep. That's true. Yeah. So, I could definitely wait, wait, that. wait a minute. Wait. Did Dobby say in chat, yes, Dota is the best and worst game ever made? And literally in my show notes, I have written down, you guys can confirm this, Dota 2 notes, best worst game ever. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that assessment. That's a good yeah. take. Of course it's a good take. It's the only time Tom has someone agreeing with him. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's a great take. <laughs> but wait, this means like two takes like in the past two podcasts Dobby has agreed with me on. There is something wrong with the universe. I can feel it. Scott's questioning his life choices is what's going on. Sure. In the yeah. I don't know. When's the last time Scott played a Dark Souls game? Ah, uh, oh shit. Do you want me to give you his take on Dark Souls? Yeah, actually. I'll give you his take. Yeah. Um, Overhyped difficulty. Take your time. Not as hard as people make it seem. Yeah, no, that's 100% yeah. accurate. That's if, totally if you know what you're thing. getting into, yeah, for sure. Yeah, as long as you take your time, it's actually not that fucking hard. I recall he said he died once in the first one. No. Just be patient. <laughs> twice. Twice. Twice in the, first. the whole game? You serious? I'm not too surprised. Are both for Ornstein and Smo? Because that's the only way that's acceptable. Fuck you if you died once randomly to some skeleton bitch. How do you both to that <laughs> I guess, I point. mean, if, I don't know. I don't see that happening. Unless you already know what Dark Souls is and what to expect. And Like, I find it hard to I believe mean, anybody could play that game not knowing what it is. And I mean, only die twice. Who at this, like, he played it like four three years ago four years ago so i mean at that point everyone knew what that game was mm -hmm. like to the point where i know about doggo i've never played the fucking game i've like, seen but, i mean so taking your time is one thing the bosses do require an amount of repetition to get their patterns down unless yeah. you like sit and study videos and watch twitch feeds all day of dark souls you don't know what you're getting into by definition I, I can see that, but at the same time, if you play, I mean, not all bosses are like that, but for the most part, like if you don't go ham, you have time to learn. Not really. It depends on the boss. Like some of them, sure, you've got time. Like the the giant dragon in the depths. Okay, that well, one. Because, okay, you run around. R but let me explain real quick. Right. They work way too fast. If you're saying not, then it flies in the face of your. It's always fair when you die. It is. Um, well, then it's then in that case, there's definitely the ability to do that. If you can't go through your first time without dying, then it's not always fair. That's implying that at some point there has to be a mechanism that kills you so you learn. And that's um, not fair. That's not fair. I don't agree with not that. Not necessarily. Definitely. No. I don't think that's true. Because it, it doesn't have to force you 
to die unfairly for you to um, like, like it could just be something where 99% of people who play the first time will die because of their preconceived notions about what video games should be yeah. um, but without like actually forcing you know unavoidable death on the player well that's what I'm getting at though is like for a game to be fair that means that there should be no requirement. I don't want to say requirement. Mm -hmm. There should be no anticipation that a player must die to the boss to learn the boss. If you're insane, uh, that one boss that breaks the rules and forces you to die to get to a new area. That's different, though. But also, uh, I'd like to point out the fact that we went how many months without bringing up Dark Souls in a significant portion of yeah. this podcast? And now it's ruined, guys. You're it's welcome. Ruined. It happened again. We're back. Dark Souls forever. No, no. I, I refuse to let this happen. And for that, so, um, yeah, I've been playing a lot of a Hunter game. New game. I think I brought it up lightly last week because I started it Saturday. This thing's actually pretty fun. Um, the wild call, or, um, Oh my God! Why can't I remember the title? I'm Hunter awful Call this. of the Wild. Thank right? you. Um, yes, the Hunter Call of the Wild. I I play games and I don't even look at titles after I start playing them. So longer titles, I tend to fuck up. No wonder all the Assassin's Creeds are fine to you. You don't know which one is which. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's like twelve games, man. They keep releasing them. It's not just all one. <laughs> but no, um, the Hunter Call of the Wild. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, Eric. I am not even slightly surprised that you enjoy a hunting game. This well, is... it's <laughs> all, not all hunting games are the same, though. No, like, for this sure not. Is, this is not your Cabela's. Like, I'm not even talking arcade Cabela's, but like your Cabela dangerous hunts and that shit. You have to take your time with this game. Mm -hmm. And the multiplayer works surprisingly well. Um, you set up a lobby. Someone literally just drops in. You guys are fucking hunting. It's just excellent. Um, the animals work or move almost how you anticipate. They model both like individuals and herds to function properly, which is really cool. And um, so there's this thing, super high level real quick. There's this thing called a drive, specifically for like deer, where you get someone on the outside of a woods waiting and you get like a huge line of guys, like six, seven guys, and they push through the woods to spook the deer out into the open where the guy's waiting to shoot them. It's called a deer drive. The way they model the, the patterns of the way animals escape and everything in this game, you can actually do that in this game with multiplayer, which is kind of fun. Uh, Smiggle and I were hunting a lion, and he had to get into this thick shit to try to find it because he had shot it. He wasn't able to find it, but I got like 500 yards out in front of him. He pushed it right to me. So it's kind of cool that they actually get this kind of talk going mm -hmm. on to it. And um, yeah. I mean, there's not a whole lot else to say except for um, the game, A, encourages you to do a lot of unethical shit. So don't look at this game and think this is what hunting is. It's not a hunting um, simulator. It's it's a hunting no, like, themed game. It, they encourage you to see shit, shoot shit, and they encourage you to shoot shit with smaller guns than you should be shooting it with. With smaller Initially. guns? Yes. Because you, a lot of guns are locked, and there's a leveling progression where the more you use a rifle, the higher your rifle score once you get a certain rifle score, you can buy better rifles. With that comes, you're using smaller caliber to start. Yeah. So you don't have the stopping power, the penetration power, not causing enough blood loss. So when you shoot a moose with it, you need to mm. shoot it like 10 fucking times to kill it, which you can okay. do. Yeah. However, if anyone does it's... that in real life, they should go to jail. Because it's unethical because it just causes a, a lot of pain for the animal without killing it. Yeah, there, there's a high probability you're not going to kill that animal, and it's just going to get injured. But um, not to harp on that. Uh, so there's a lot of different guns you can unlock, which really find cool. And then the way they did the maps, there's two maps to come with the game. And then after that, you have all of these DLCs, and each DLC is a huge brand new map, and all the maps bring in new animals. So that's how they're introducing new animals to hunt, new areas to hunt is by all the DLC, which is like $5. You get a map the same size of the one you've been playing on with just as many new animals. So it's oh, cool. relatively cheap the how way the is, game... How big is the map? Huge. Huge. 24 hours in, probably 15 hours on one map, and I still haven't seen it all. 
Oh, okay. Huge maps. So, yeah, it's a lot of ground. I will be, if I really wanted to, I could probably sink 100 hours into this content easily God damn. without really getting too repetitive with it. Because I'm at like 20 something right now and I've only hunted one map. And I have like nine. I mean, it just, it kind of fits the theme though, because uh, you did put 100 hours into the other hunting game. Phasmophobia. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and over, the oh, maps weren't well. even that big there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but who knows what kind of maps are going to add for size wise. That's hint, true. Hint, hint. Because hint, I think. Hint. Hint. Is that, is that, hint. Is that a hint? Hint. Is that a hint, hint for a next topic? Oh, the phasmophobia. Um, yeah, I checked out the prison map today. I didn't actually play oh, around. I just kind of just. I just started one and walked around and, and looked at everything. It's really cool. The atmosphere is awesome. Um, it's a creepy prison. I mean, what more could you expect? Um, they did add some more sound effects, like random environmental stuff. Like you could hear. Uh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! He says. Uh, they did add like a like a like a creaking, squeaking metal sound, like a, a door being oh. swung open slowly. That is oh. the worst. Why did they do that? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> And the, I, I, I'm glad. In VR. <laughs> um, but I'm glad they they didn't go with a huge giant prison map. It's not as big as Asylum. It's probably closer to maybe the high school map, maybe a little smaller. Really? Even. Okay. And, that's and it's great. yeah, and the shape of the the overall map is different too. So it's not it doesn't feel like a a different skin of of high school. It actually feels like its own map layout wise too. Nice. So. So they did a good job with well, it. So we'll have to play some, play some ghost hunting and and try it out. Oh so. yeah, well, I'm even I'm down for trying some tonight. But yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they did like a unique layout with it too. Because that was something else I was thinking. Like if they just keep doing big squares and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, call it whatever you want. Slap another name on it and call it a new map. That would kind of mm -hmm. suck. Yeah. So but yeah, that, that's really rad. Um, also, on the Phasmophobia front, um, so I witnessed someone else play it for the first time in VR, whom has not subs had significant time in VR. And I will say, that game will induce motion sickness. Yes, it will. It, um, you need to absolutely have really good VRC legs. Like, I don't have VRC legs enough for that game. It doesn't run the greatest because of some of the bugginess, like the way you clip Ooh. through things. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like iron gut VRC legs, you might end up having to sit down after a round or two. <laughs> I yeah, do remember that happening, things, happening to you one night. Yeah, one of the things this game does is, um, and early VR games also made this mistake. I think it's like one of the default options, but if you start to clip through the environment, one of the things it'll do is it'll turn your screen black real quick, move you, and then turn your screen back on. So if you're constantly pressing into a wall or something where you're colliding and it, it's not super apparent, and the collision in that game is is kind of kind of scuffed. Like, I can actually get myself trapped in any, like, trash can sitting on the floor. I will get trapped inside of it, guaranteed. Because <laughs> um, you're a piece so of trash, Tom. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, I, I know where I am. I know my place. I get it. Um, but what happens is you're inside this trash can and you're trying to move and you're strobing everywhere because it keeps trying to teleport you back in bounds, um, which means, yeah, you're getting this weird, like, jittery motion happening all in your viewport, uh, which is not great for motion sickness. So be aware. Indeed. And I'm going to take this time to pull back up show notes because I'm not a bad <laughs> cast member. I so, didn't accidentally close it down. So there was a question in chat earlier that is a very broad um, general gaming kind of question that's a common debate. And I don't know that we've actually addressed it much ever on the cast. So, so he says, convince me that PC is better than console. No. And I'm going to say, I mean, my first reaction to this is it isn't necessarily i think yeah. both both have their their advantages and disadvantages and drawbacks and whatever um i think i think it's really common for 
for people to get in their their in group and out group scenario with stuff like this like even between yeah. consoles like playstation and xbox or you know and of course pc and console um but i think consoles are nice in that you spend x dollars and you have a box and that box will play play the games and that's it and that's the the most you have to put into it and it is simple PC gaming, you have more flexibility, but it is a little more difficult to get into, and it can be more expensive. But it doesn't have to be more expensive, right? I mean, what's a PS5 cost right now? Was it seven hundred bucks? Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five or six, something like that. But you're yeah, not consoles. getting. I mean, you're not going to get a really awesome PC for six hundred bucks, but you're going to get one that can play. I mean, it will be able to play any any modern game if with well, that graphics setting. Like yeah, without the FPS and NDP, yeah. you're not going to be running max graphics settings on everything. But I mean, you can uh, run... you're not getting sixty. You're not going to get sixty FPS all the time if you're running yeah, a six hundred dollar build. Yeah, depending on the game. No, depends. But you'll on the get game. six. You'll get sixty all the time I... with a console. Now, yeah, true. Uh, depending, depending. Uh, on even the PS... a lot of the newer consoles are locking to thirty uh, in certain games. The PS5? I thought the big yeah. thing on the PS5 was it was unrestricted on that. Like, you're going no, to be able not, to get 60. Not all the time. It'll be able to get 60 on any PS4 game today, but when the big PS5 games start pushing those uh, those frames now. Yeah. But I, I think the big thing was called out in chat. The most important thing when it comes to games is the fucking games. That, yeah, if exactly. If you like yeah. Sony exclusives... PC's not better for you because they don't have the fucking game you want to play. Right, exactly. If, if, yeah. your, if your objective is to play Breath of the Wild, getting a $50,000 gaming PC isn't going to help you worth shit yeah. until that thing is is well emulatable, right? Yeah, like, I was going to say, even at this point, you can emulate it, but even really good computers chug. Yeah. yeah, like, it's it's all about the games. And, you mm -hmm. know, for, for me and the stuff I play, like, I'm playing Proteus, I'm playing Rocket League, I'm playing a bunch of weird indie shit that only releases on itch.io. Yeah, yeah, PC is the proper home for me. Um, but, like, if you want to just play Halo and Madden and want to buy an Xbox and call it done and that's what all your friends have got, like, just fucking do it. Yeah. Don't don't get caught up in the, the dick-waving contest of what's the better console and who has many more teraflops than this guy. Like, it doesn't fucking matter, yeah. man. If you want to play the next Metroid game, you're buying a Switch. If you want to play the next Crash Bandicoot game, well, I guess mm -hmm. you can play that on PC now, but yeah. Sony's kind of the home for that. Yeah, and I think you called out my big number two, and that's why I was on Xbox for so long. Community. People yeah. you're playing with. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do your going... friends play on? That's a big, big yeah. factor. It's a huge factor. And I, I will say this, though. Like, if you're going to say all things are even, let's say you don't have friends and money's not an issue. Mm -hmm. PC. I feel PC just because if you get a game on console and a game on PC, 90% of the time, it's going to probably, if you have a good PC, it's going to run better on PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not always. I mean, th there are games made for console that the PC ports fucking trash. That yeah. does happen. Yeah. But I feel most cons most games come to PC nowadays, and PCs can run them better than consoles. Yeah. It's just PC, to be able to run it better than a console at a consistent clip, it's going to be more expensive. You're sure. going to be updating graphics cards every three years. Yeah. And the price of a graphics card, just the graphics card, a new one, is going to be more than a console. Not necessarily. And, uh, if you, if you get, well, no, if you're going new... Yeah, but you don't have to go like new to even to play at a really nice frame rates in, in modern games. Yeah, that, that's true. Like I, I'm playing a ten. Like my my last so, PC like, I had for quite a long time, and it and it worked pretty pretty well. Um, but for I, that's what, for me though, my biggest thing with PC is I think that I mean you get a larger variety and a larger library of games overall. I think than either console. Yes. Like maybe even combined. Yeah. Because a lot of small indie developers, which, by the way, have made some of my favorite games of all time, uh, small developers or small small companies and developers doesn't mean it's going to be a, a worse game or whatever. Like there are some really really solid games made by just a few people. Um, yeah. But but those types of games are more likely to be found on PC than on console. And that's because consoles have regulations and restrictions exactly. yeah. on publishing. Yep. Whereas. 
on Steam, give them a hundred dollars and fill out an application, your game's there. Mm -hmm. Itch.io, uh, itch. just throw the shit up there. Account. Yeah, you just yeah. upload the the executable and you're fucking done. Um, that said, that means that there's there's some weird shit out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if if your main concern is saying, okay, I want to make sure everything my kid plays is like teen and under rated by the ESRB. Yeah, maybe PC gaming isn't quite for you because, you know, there's not great parental controls there compared to uh, um, the big console manufacturers, right? Like, so, there's some, but no, it's not as tight as, like, here. on the Switch, I can set up, okay, you can play these rated games for this long with these people on this, like, like allow listed friends list, and that's it. So last week on Steam, there was literally nudity on the homepage. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Like full frontal nudity on the homepage. Yet, they'll still hit me with a fucking age restriction for violent games. <laughs> yep. But, um, so it's, oh, go ahead. Uh, but p part of the, the large library of games on PC or whatever, you also can offset some of the cost of the rig in that there are a lot more, I think, a lot more sales on games, particularly not brand new shiny AAA games um, on on PC. I can't tell you how many times I've spent $5 or less on a game and got tons of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. I got 100 hours. I got 100 hours out of a game that cost me a Gatorade. <laughs> Literally, I bought Adam a Gatorade. He bought me the Bind of Isaac. Yeah. So there are there are plenty if you're if you're willing to not play the you know the newest of the new games on release day, like you can get some pretty steep discounts on games. Um, right now there's an autumn sale going on on Steam and there's tons of games that are like 80, 90% off. Like it happens. Yeah. And uh, you know, also other small call outs modding like if, mm -hmm. if you're playing Skyrim and you want the definitive Skyrim, Skyrim experience, it's on PC because that's where the mods are, right? There have been experiments with including modding in consoles, specifically with Fallout 4, but it's a very small amount and it has to be built specifically for the console. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not a great experience modding on, on other platforms. And in some cases, like if you mod on a Switch at all, Nintendo will just ban your device ID. Like they will just ban your account so fucking fast. Because uh, they're not super happy about that stuff. Yeah. Well, because for what three generations now, they've been getting cracked and jailbroke, so yeah. they don't want anything going into their system. I think people who are just getting into PC gaming though aren't going to be doing a lot of modding. No, no, no probably not. And uh, we've talked a lot on the upsides. I do want to talk about the downside. You're your own fucking support. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Your when PC shit goes, break, your I mean, you can card you can buy pre-built PCs so you don't have to build it yourself. But if a component goes bad, you have to deal with the manufacturer of that specific component. Yeah. Well, and not even just that. On consoles, legit. Well, until recently, there's some gray area. You put a game in, it works. Yeah. That's not the same on PC. You can legitimately buy a game and it won't run on your computer. Yeah, if you have a really low real real <laughs> things. If you buy really, really old parts or some old used PC from somebody and then buy a brand new shiny game, it might or, not run or, at all. Well, or completely fuck the driver. Just like if your PC has been around for a while, right? You might buy Cyberpunk 2077 and realize, oh shit, I can't really run this. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking I'm talking more about when, um, oh shit, there's, this uh, doesn't run optimal on my version of graphics card. There's a patch I need to get, but it doesn't come out till tomorrow. And like, you have to make sure you get out there, you get your patch for your drivers and all that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. do, you don't do, do that with console. The console just updates and you're done. Yeah. Day one, Doom Eternal. I had massive issues running that game because it needed a graphics driver update that didn't come out for the next couple of days. Like, it was shit. You will have issues with consoles on day one stuff too, but the difference is the, it just updates. It does, it fixes it itself. Where graphics drivers and stuff, you can get some of the software that does it automatically, but I've never had luck with it. I've always had to do it manually. And that's not to say that you have to be a computer expert. You just have to be decent at using Google. You know, when I launch <laughs> yes. in, I get this error message. Copy, paste, enter. Okay, let's see what the first couple of results have to say. I'll try what they're trying. 
Yeah, uh, if you're the person that your friends hit you with, let me Google that for you. Yeah, you might not be the one that's ready for this kind of challenge. <laughs> yeah. And and let's let's be clear. If you're looking at building a PC, honestly, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard, especially modern PCs. They're just big ass Lego projects. Square it's cable goes in square hole. Circle cable goes in circle hole. <laughs> it is intimidating. It's intimidating. Yeah. It's scary. it's scary looking at all those cables and going like, oh shit. I just spent $2,000 on this thing. What am I going to do if I break it? But honestly, PCs are built to be built. It's, I, I mean, make it pretty easy. The it's first clip, than it ever has been. Yeah, the first time I ever built a PC, I literally just watched a 15 minute YouTube video and followed along step by step as I went, and it was fine. It worked first try, it was fine. Yeah. Nothing is more scary to me, though, than clipping in that processor. Oh my God, it's <laughs> terrifying. Dude, I've been building PCs for probably over half my life at this point. That still scares the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, my friend DJ Roomba, uh, he just posted his recent build. He sent me a picture doing it. He's like, I'm always afraid when I do this. I think the only thing that compares is pushing in RAM because RAM always feels like it's yeah. going to break when you're clipping it in. <laughs> exactly. Okay, we're, good. we're good. We're good. There's that. There's about a five second panic of, did I break it or did it go in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we make that sound so awful. Um, we're all, I think, P PC primary, and I think yeah. I'm the only one that really... Uh, co oh, Tom consoles a little now. I do console I, a little bit. I've got a PS4, I've got a Switch. I haven't touched either in months. I would console if I just had more extra money to have one, but I, I can never justify a whole console purchase on, like, the two or three maybe games yeah. that are, don't well, also that release on PC that I would want to play. That's the hard thing right now, because at this point, it's just Sony. Yeah. Sony's the only... Well, actually, Sony's the only one with titles worth a damn anyway. Mm -hmm. But they're the only one that have titles that aren't coming to PC. Yeah, that's true. And they've got a really nice controller. I think I'm going to get one of those controllers yeah. for PC, too, at some point. I've heard really good things about the, the DualSense controller. I, I want to get my hands on it, but I still hold that the Xbox controller is the best form factor ever made. I, I love this form factor. I'm loving. I mean, the the Dual Shock has always been just solid, and that's the thing about the Xbox controllers. Like they they have made significant changes to it over the years. The Dual Shock has been the same since the PS One. Like they are the the epitome of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't this, like this the Dual seems... Thumbstick at the bottom. Yeah, I know. That's I'm most getting, if I'm most people that don't like the PlayStation controller, that's the thing they don't like. I mean, that's pretty standard, I think. Yeah. Either you like it or you don't. Yeah. But I do think the um, the new PS5 controller looks more different than any of the other iterations. Like that's it seems like the shape might be a little more filled out like the Xbox controller is. But with the same yeah. button layout as in the the analog stick layout as PlayStation if I didn't know and someone told me that that was an off-brand, I would have believed it. <laughs> it doesn't look I like mean, an off-brand. No, no, it I don't mean really that in a nice blasphemous way. and elegant. I don't mean that in a blasphemous way. I'm just saying like a third-party controller that's not Sony-owned. I would have believed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not saying like trash wildcat you give your friends so you can beat them at GoldenEye kind of bullshit. <laughs> I, just, I just blurred shit there, but go with it. Um, yeah. Sick, bro. Here's your controller. <laughs> uh, well, but that yeah. was that. was that. Also, OP controller GameCube? No. That A button I was love, way too fucking large. Love the GameCube controller. I know exactly where I'm at on that controller because the button feel alone. It is easily the best controller I've used. I appreciate what they were going for with the idea of make the button you use the most the largest. I, I get that, but I, I just didn't like it. And that Z button, let's be real. Okay, like, if Z you button, loved the controller, that Z button was hot garbage. Which one was the Z button? The, the one that was only on the right side. Or, yeah, top right. It wasn't even top left. Wait. It was an asymmetric or a controller. Oh. So you had an R1, but without an L1. It oh. was fucking weird. Weird. Although that's kind of how I hold my PlayStation controller when we play Rocket League. 
oddly. Uh, inverse for me. I never hit RB, but I'm always hitting LB on the LT. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Box trash player. <laughs> ah, wow. So what other games I have realized. we played this week? What's, what else is going on? I tried out, uh, and I realized I just typed up the name in the show notes, uh, Gunfire Reborn. Um, so I saw, I think it was Acro and Smiggle playing this. Um, it is a co-op roguelike first person shooter dungeon crawler um and yeah it's it's a lot of fun um i don't know how how long i'm gonna last on it because there are boss battles i don't know how actual like lengthy the game is but uh it's fun it's kind of got that borderlands-esque progression mechanic where you're constantly finding new guns and new upgrades and because it's a roguelite um as you play, like the guns that are available to you will keep growing in like size and scope and amount. So when you start out the game, you have a relatively small pool of weapons that continually grows and expands, uh, along with a skill tree and multiple characters you can unlock that all play slightly different. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm enjoying it. The only thing I don't like is towards the end of the second world, because I haven't gotten very far, things start to feel a little bit bullet spongy. But I don't know if that's because I was using the wrong weapons or because they were a bullet spongy. Um, but overall, it's a fun game. Um, I don't really have any complaints. Um, it was fairly cheap. I think I got it for 10 bucks. And at that price, yeah, for a night of fun with the boys, totally worth 10 bucks. I, I fully intend on getting that. I've been wanting to get it for six months. I just haven't done it yet. Six months? So ever since. I don't know I if it's been six months. Right now, really holding so. out for it, huh? Soon as Acro saw it and or called it out to me, I saw it. I'm like, this looks good. Like it, you nailed all the things that caught my eyes. Like this is Borderlands, but a roguelike. Yeah, which I think works better than actual Borderlands because I can play with Acro and Smiggle, even though they have like shit tons of hours in this game, and not feel like I felt when you guys got super into Borderlands and I took a week off. Like, yep. Okay. You guys are severely outleveled. I'm never going to be able to play with you. I'm just going to quit the game. Like, I have less than 20 hours in Borderlands 3 because I just got left behind and I don't feel like playing it alone. Uh, um, it wasn't as this, good anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. With this, I can just play. I I really, really like roguelite, uh, or roguelites for that reason. I don't ever feel like I'm missing out on one of these lifestyle games. Because that's, that's what they are. It's games that are designed to get you to grind for hundreds of hours. And I don't really have fucking time for that, guys. Come on, game devs. <laughs> Not I'm every game needs to be a thousand to... hours long. Yeah, exactly. like, it's, just give me, like, that's... something that's fun and lasts three hours. Like, yeah. you know. I'm all about uh, the... Edith Finch. Edith Finch was great. It was two and a half hours. It was over. That's it. That's all she wrote. I don't need to go back. I am all about the between two and eight hour games. I'm all about it. Yeah. And I think it's for the rogue lights. I've become a very social gamer. Most of the games I play, I play because I can play with people. I mean, there, there are a few I'll still play single player or whatever, but most of the time I'm social. And I love rogue lights. Absolutely love them. So this development of starting to see more and more of them adopt multiplayer in some fashion, I'm really, really liking to see. Yeah. Like I'm really enjoying seeing more multiplayer roguelites. Um, so I, I saw Call of Duty come up in the chat, and I'm, I'm going to respond, but not to anything related to what came up in chat. Uh, I was actually <laughs> playing, I didn't write it down, but I was playing a little bit of uh, Call of Duty World War II, and I am going to spoil one part of one mission from an old Call of Duty game from a campaign that nobody actually plays or cares about. So if you really care, I don't know, I guess mute for like the next what? two minutes. There was, <laughs> I think you're uh, safe. There was Go a ahead. moment, <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a moment in the game where you're trying to lead civilians out of this German city because you're marching through and, you know, it's a literal war zone. You're shooting Nazis. Um, and it's like this big emotional scene. You just literally like snuck through in a forced stealth segment uh, to rescue this little girl from Nazis. And she's like crying the whole time. You're like, shut up, woman. You're going to get us killed. It was great. It was a super impactful, emotional moment. And then at the very end, of course, the little girl's big sister slash like a mother person gets shot. She dies. And, like, it's this big, 
a whole thing where you're like, well, we need to escort them so they don't get shot up on the road. And we're like, no, we can't. They already got shot, so let's just send them off. So now they're off on their own. Like said, music starts playing. You're just sitting there like, shit, man, the horrors of war. Like, this is awful. And then up in the bottom of my screen, it it pops up. Achievement unlocked. Collateral damage. I'm like, fucking really, Call of Duty? <laughs> like, you couldn't wait until wait. after the level transition. Like, she gets shot. She dies. Collateral damage. Achievement unlocked. Like, fucking really? Come on. Wow. Did nobody goddamn playtest this? Like, they didn't even wait until after the jump cut. It was like she's still bleeding looking at, like, her little sister slash daughter figure in the face. Like dying with achievement unlocked and the little bloop bloop popping up like all right cool guys civilians dying during wartime yeah achievement <laughs> unlocked yeah there was i mean there, <laughs> let, let's be honest they're not strangers to that no yeah. they're not they're really fucking not but uh, you'd think they'd learn like read the room guys you built the room you should be able to read it <laughs> there People is love only that first mission yeah, or go ahead, Adam. There, there's been exactly one achievement I've been glad to see ever, and that was the part where he kills you in Portal <laughs> Two. Yeah, <laughs> you get to this part, and and the the main characters oh go oh crap this is this is the part where he kills us, and then the villain's like this is the part where I kill you, and it shows the title screen chapter three the part where he kills you, and then it's <laughs> then you get this achievement unlocked the part where he kills you, and it's so good. <laughs> That is such a good thing. But yeah, that's the only time I've ever been happy to see any kind of achievement unlock in the corner. Like, I just don't care at I, all about any of that. I yeah. used to be the guy that chased them. I had a roommate that worked at GameStop. We ran, uh, we rented for free because of the GameStop employee benefit bullshit. Uh, Naruto. And we all thousand pointed that thing in 15 minutes. And we only <laughs> got it because well, it's an easy thing to thousand point. <laughs> so I mean, I absolutely was that it's, guy. It's one thing if you're getting an achievement for, like, like doing a challenge or achieving something in the game, but just to pop it up at like a certain story moment because you progress the story a little bit in a linear game, like it's not an achievement. That's just like just show a title screen at the end of the scene or something. So yeah. I I used to think that way until I realized that you can look at the percentages on Steam and like get a little bit of ep and superiority out of that like i can pl i got it i made it to level two right oh shit look only 80 percent of the people who own this game have made it to level two well fuck you i played the game i am clearly better than the other 20 percent of people who didn't play this portion of call of duty um it's, it's, it's I, funny to see i don't like those i like the ones where it is about the campaign but something different Halo 3 are one of my favorites. At the very end of the game, you're leaving the, uh, to start what's going to be probably one of the best Warthog scenes. Um, and you have to fight your way through this mountain and everything. And everyone did this. And you just get out and you shoot your entire way through. Most people didn't know this. And it took someone on the internet to point it out. There is an achievement. And as soon as you get out of this ramp, you walk down. If you actually go around, there's ghosts parked underneath it. And there's an achievement for taking those ghosts to the end rather than a Warthog nice like i like those kind of achievements where it's like alternative ways to play the game that you might not thought of that we're going to reward you for like unique things I, I really dig it yeah but I, I thought it was kind of funny it was i literally after that mission i shut off the game and i played rocket league instead so it's like that nah, okay i was into this i was really into this and uh now i'm not it ejected me from the experience completely yeah. And I, I do want to get to his question real quick. So I don't think we actually did we or correct me if I'm wrong. Did we touch the idea of um, skill based matchmaking on this? Because I know we talked a lot about it in Discord, but did we actually speak to it here? A little bit. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in here. Yeah. But not okay. Well, so then I don't want to rehash too much then. Yeah. The So I think the general consensus from us is why would anybody be mad about skill based matchmaking other than people who just want to stomp on people that are worse than them and and feel yeah. super good or whatever so i the only argument i've ever heard that makes any sense to me um in opposition to skill based skill based matchmaking is people saying that without skill based matchmaking you can 
you can get a greater sense of your improvement as a player based on how you're doing compared to everyone else in your lobbies on average. So, but but all that does functionally, I think, is it changes which metrics you're looking at for improvement. Either yeah. you're a looking at your kill streaks or your your KD ratios or whatever um, to to base your personal skill level on or in a skill based matchmaking system you're looking at your rank or MMR level or whatever they show you that corresponds to your skill in your skill based matchmaking system um, but I think they, they achieve the same thing like it, you're just choosing which metric do you want to see for your own personal progress well, and I like the skill based matchmaking version of that because you can see the your progress based on your MMR without ruining the game lobby for people who aren't as good as you yeah. Well, and let's let's, let's all forget it. This games where you just pub stomp forever. Like in games without skill-based matchmaking, we've all been involved in one of those servers where you're clearly the best team and you're just stomping some kids left and right. Like you mm -hmm. see that in some three-person parties in Rocket League and Standard. Yeah. Where yeah, there is skill-based matchmaking, but hey, these three people grouped up. You, th your three people grouped up. It sucks to be them, I guess. And mm -hmm. after the initial stomp, it's just not fun. After mm -hmm. the initial stomp, you're just, you know, curb stopping corpse. Yeah. And that's I mean, not as good. That being said, well, not every game has to have it. Like, depending on what kind of game it is, I mean, you might specifically want that aspect. Like, something like Escape from Tarkov doesn't have any sort of matchmaking system. It just throws, you know, however many people need to fill up the map onto one map and they go to town. And But that's, like, the nature of the game. That's supposed to be a super hardcore... Uh, you know, doesn't hold your hand type of like survival yeah. game. And it makes sense in that context. And as well as really shitty players can catch a really good player off guard. It yeah. only takes a split second versus mm -hmm. other games like COD. Yeah, you might get a kill on a really good player, but it's deathmatch. He's going to get you the 25 other times. Mm -hmm. Well, in, I, I think in COD in particular, people don't see the design they just look at it from the singular point of view of how does this affect me, right? Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, they had the noob tube, right? The under barrel grenade launcher was one of the first available items that you unlock. And high level players hated it. It took no skill to pull off and it trounced people who actually knew what they were doing. But it was put in there specifically for that reason. The noob tube was put into Call of Duty's multiplayer specifically to give lower level ch uh, players a chance against people who had actually learned the ropes. So eventually you do graduate. You learn that, okay, the noob tube, sure, it's gonna get some kills, but it's way more effective if I do these things instead of just blindly firing. Um, it, it was a teaching mechanism and a, honestly an equalizer. And mm -hmm. people hated it because it made them feel less ep -ny and less special. Get over it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah. You don't and have the biggest EP in the world. I mean, there's a whole lot of EPs out there. Yours ain't nothing special. <laughs> I don't know. You told Reddit it was. I love you just the way you are. Like, I don't know. What do you want from me? Oh, Scott calls out the other thing. That was the equalizer. Fucking martyrdom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you die, you drop a grenade. The yep. uh, If I suck, I can still get a kill. Mentality. Dude, I guess that in fucking Counter-Strike. I'll hold a grenade and run up to somebody and then start firing. <laughs> well, okay. Like, I, I don't want to blasphemous too much, but I have more respect for that because that is a conscious decision of I'm going to forfeit my life so this grenade's live when I die. Yeah. Which is a fucking baller move if you know you're going to die. <laughs> I, I, will, I will do that sometimes with a Desert Eagle, like in Pavlov. I'll hold a lit grenade in one hand, pull the pin, hold it, and then use my Desert Eagle one-handed, which is way less accurate than two-handed. And then when I run up to somebody and they kill me, I, sometimes I kill him right back, which is great. Also, you have to but, physically do it, so I feel like it's definitely balanced. Yeah. <laughs> but, all right. I don't want to get too deep in it. I think we pretty much know we're all pro what, oh, so. Dobby's Either calling way. out. He's on a seven-game winning streak. That right. That's hard. That's real hard. Tough. Yeah. No, the, but, the, our condolences. Guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we... Okay. Uh, story time. So, <laughs> in a game of Dota, uh, we had a four stack. And uh, so that means we had one random with us. 
this random wasn't communicating with us in a game very very heavily relying on communication um he wouldn't use chat he wouldn't or like voice or text and when he started using text he was an asshole well he effectively cost us a game by the way he was playing so okay we played with the dude we lost whatever next game he matches with us again and doesn't really like this is us so he comes into the game touting that he's on a seven game win streak not realizing he was just on our team last match and we lost so that is the e peens that we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. And he said, well, oh, wait, no, no. I meant, I meant like with this character on Tuesdays <laughs> when it was training the previous day. Yeah, because Scott called him out. Deep stew. <laughs> like that, if you only count those games, that's, that's the games where I've only won is the winning streak that I'm counting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, th those, those are the funny. assholes that like the other mode but anyway yeah. um i did have another new game i forgot about this oh uh do you guys remember about a year and a half ago there was like a rl stylish game called uh, steel circus that i really kind of dug it was like the top down third person well this is I re remember the, the name show. that's about it all right uh just know that like even some um rl pros like uh rizzo i think was actually really big into it so, like, it was very similar to Rocket League in the 3v3 kind of thing. There's a new game called Super Buckyball Tournament. And it's um, Buckyball, by the way. Um, it's 3v3, over-the-shoulder third-person Rocket League soccer kind of thing. Super fucking fun. I played a lot with Dave and Slugger. Uh, I know Heroic Saint has been getting into it. Um, I haven't been able to see player accounts yet. I haven't seen it on Steam charts. I fear it's going to die. I really do. But God, it's a fun game. I It's free right now. I recommend anyone who semi-enjoys sports games and or Rocket League to try it just to see if you enjoy it. It's free. Super fun. Um, it's pretty high skill level if you want to get really technical with it. And the game will punish you for not having a goalie. So there is some sense of like positions required. Mm -hmm. But it is a lot of fun. Whole lot of fun. So... Wanted to throw that out there. If you have some free time this weekend, give it a shot. Nice. Yeah. I uh, I put in a little bit more time in Proteus. Um, Still loving it? That soundtrack. That soundtrack. <laughs> oh, that soundtrack. Like, the gameplay is great, but, oh, that soundtrack. Um, ooh, they they do something cool. Like, uh, so Doom 2016 didn't really have any overtly creepy music because it was generally just a power fantasy. Uh, in Proteus, I've I've heard soundtracks that like start out creepy, like you've got no ammo, you've got a pistol, you're sneaking around, you're like popping one or two guys, like what the fuck do I even do here? I'm literally about to use my fist to attack these like demons or creatures or whatever. Um, until like you successfully sneak into a base, get your loadout, open the door, and then like the heavy guitar comes in and it like perfectly moves the song from like this creeping horror stealth vibe into this power fantasy sort of metal ballad it was just <laughs> badass um if if you like boomer shooters if you're looking for something more old school uh, i can still recommend proteus uh, and by the way the online map system where you can play custom maps super sick and built right into the game you don't even have to leave the game it's cool i need to jump back I'm into that game it's so good. I'm never going to get tired of hearing the phrase boomer shooter. <laughs> I know. Right? It's so great. It's the perfect. It's exactly it's perfect, what yeah. it is, too. Is that also um, the game Adam was playing a lot of, the psychedelic quake on LSD? I don't also know. Also qualify? Post That's not a boomer, boomer shooter, shooter, no. Nope. Nope. No, right. I don't think it's so. weird. Anyway, speaking of shooters, did you have anything this week interesting in Tarky, Adam? Uh, no, not really. Uh, had some good games, had some bad games, had some blunders. Uh, Classic no. blunder? Uh, I killed myself with my own grenade. That was pretty, yeah, that's pretty sick. Classic blunders. <laughs> How'd it happen? Um, I, I was trying to throw it in this doorway, but like not straight at the doorway. I was off to the side, so there was like a kind of a small window, and I was trying to throw it in the doorway to bounce off of the back wall and then into the room more. And okay. it bounced off of the door jam, 
and to the stairwell. So I pushed up closer to throw another one, thinking that I was safe from the first one because I thought I saw it go down the stairs in the stairwell. It apparently did not go down the stairs in the stairwell, or it was in a spot where I could still get hit by the shrapnel or whatever. And um, yeah, the, the guy that was in that room that I was trying to kill the whole time got a, a nice gear set for free. So I hope he's enjoying it. <laughs> Uh, Scott did call out uh, the Twitch rivals for Tarkov happened this week. Oh yeah, I, I didn't, didn't get to watch. I didn't get to watch any of it, but I, it was team based, which was cool. And Pesley was in it. I really like him. Mm -hmm. Personality wise, he's my favorite of the streamers. That said, Landmark again got second place, which is funny because I think he's kind of accepted as probably the best PvP guy. Uh, but definitely this is like one two, of them. Yeah. Two in a row, he's gotten second place and hasn't been able to actually win. Yeah. Well, th that is um, the Twitch Rivals thing is isn't just kill other players. They have specific objectives. Yeah. And it, it was a be, bingo style. Yeah, exactly. It was a bingo style, uh, specific objectives, not necessarily just getting player kills and stuff. But he did win the one. There was one tournament that actually pestily held. Um, I can't remember what it was called at the moment, but it was PvP, and that's all it was. And yeah. Won that one in sure. the factory. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really fucking cool. It was tournament. a good. I think that was a good format for the game for sure. It's yeah. a hard and game love... to make any kind of competition out of because it's such a, a, a non, I guess non fair. You know, there's a decent amount of RNG, RNG in the game. It's it's not, you know, top contender for any kind of competitive esport angle or whatever. But it, well, it's I cool think that that's awesome. To... Go ahead. I, I think it's also why, though, the RNG factors, why they do four hours getting to raids, because at that point, they've all had equal chance to get a part of that same RNG. It's to not degree, one bad yeah. RNG and you're done. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I really like that. And the fact that Battlestar, or Battle State, Battlestar Games, the dev house, they give all these tournaments brand new accounts. They'll give them accounts to use for these tournaments. Cool. Yeah. Be because they have to, the, because the way Tarkov runs, you're if you can't use a personal account because you'd have all this gear. You'd have the gear, so you, and there's uh, skills that level up as you play, and all all kinds of stuff that would make it. There, there are a lot of layers that would make it an uneven playing field going into the the first round of whatever comp competition. So they always give. I shouldn't say always for the sanctioned tournaments through them. They always give free accounts to all the participants to use just for that tournament. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool to see. Yeah, I like seeing that kind of like, hey, not only are we going to be super transparent, we're going to feed this game as much as possible by getting tournaments out there sponsored mm -hmm. by us. That is rad. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So uh, I have I have one small update, and I'm going to keep giving these updates every time I learn something new or interesting from uh, from Half Life Alex's developer commentary. Uh, so I've been running through a little bit more of that. I'm probably about eh, a little under halfway through the game uh, with the dev commentary turned on. It's incredible the amount of detail they threw into that game and the amount of playtesting they did. So I didn't realize it, um, but uh, apparently Half-Life Alex makes some VR players extremely uncomfortable when they want to heal themselves. Um, so near one of the healing syringes in the game, like I didn't even think about it. You use a healing syringe, you push a button, the needle comes out, and you just stick it somewhere on your virtual person to heal yourself. Um, some players were freaked out because they're needles, and they're injecting themselves with needles in virtual reality, and apparently some people's fear of needles is uh, intense enough that it uh, actually impacted the way they played the game. Um, and I... Valve decided to keep it in specifically because, yeah, it's kind of kind of icky and weird needing to inject yourself with needles to heal instead of pushing a button. Um, so they, they actually were looking at players and where they would inject. Like, people would typically pick a favorite spark, uh, spot to inject themselves with uh, this, like, health enhancement thing. Uh, you mean this, like in the healing. bedroom with the lights off where they can lay on the bed for five hours after they inject? Or a gas station bathroom, like whatever works. <laughs> um, I typically choose the hand, right? It's showing. I just hit the back of the hand and it's done. Um, they actually have a physical body system. So you can inject like arms, legs, wherever. 
um, some players, they had to build in a target on the head because players would look at the needle and be like, I wonder if this works, and they'd stab themselves in the face. They were disappointed when it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> some players that do, though, it's, it's great. It just works. Um, even the NPCs will react differently. Like, somebody will talk to you, like, as a tutorial, like, oh, hey, does that syringe say poison on it? No? Okay, well, you're probably safe. And then it tells the player to inject the thing. Um, if you just grab it and inject it, the NPC will go, did you just pick up a random syringe and inject yourself with it? What the fuck? And your character goes, wow, I feel great. And you're like, well, I think that's fine. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> just great. I like all these little things. Um, last night, uh, I was fighting some, some head crabs and decided to go into battle with armor. Um, I found a cooking pot. I didn't know this was a thing. There's a bunch of different props in Half-Life Alex. I took the handle, I put it on my head, and uh, yeah, it's it's a helmet. You can wear a cooking pot on That's your awesome. head. That's <laughs> awesome. Does that uh, stop the better. base crabs from actually being able to latch? It stops the barnacles. So the little things with the tongues hanging from the ceiling that try to strangle you. If you walk under one of those, it'll just grab whatever you're wearing on your head. So yeah, if you find a cooking pot, it really actually does help you in the game. It's kind of cool. Um, the other thing I learned was uh, humans will pack bond with fucking anything. Um, originally, when they were working on this new enemy design, they had an animation set. Like, they got everything just perfect because players love playing against this thing, but it was just a recolored old enemy in early playtests. Apparently, they made it too cute. Players would walk up and try to pet this thing and then get attacked, which was not the intention. Um, <laughs> and even worse, like when the thing wasn't super actively aggressive and was mostly fearful of players, people wouldn't kill it. Like you had to kill it to get a puzzle piece to walk into the next room, but they just refused to do any damage to it because it was so Super pitiful. <laughs> why, why would you kill this? Like, just let it go, avoid the thing and walk away and players would get stuck. So they actually had to build in like a super aggressive animation style into this enemy. And they showed the different um, animation styles, which is really cool. Um, the, uh, or I'm sorry, no, they, they should footsteps. I'll get into footsteps here. Um, but it's really cool. Um, they, they add to add, or they had to add a, uh, a jumping attack. So if players got too close, like trying to pet the damn creature, uh, that it would jump up and attack them, signaling, hey, you probably don't want to do that again. It's going to bite your head off. Um, retreat! The other thing retreat! They made, you know, like, in some video games, characters will, like, slide. Like, you can definitely tell they're trying to walk, but it's just a character sliding from one position to another. Mm -hmm. um, like, the footsteps don't quite line up. Yeah. Valve built a custom uh, IK system into their their animation system which basically says okay if a god that shot was fast if a character needs to move from this position to this one what physical steps and shifting of body weight do you have to make to get the person from here to there and then they let the animation system drive that including foot placement so it's predictive foot placement and body weight shifting built into the animations so everything oh. looks exactly how it should it okay. is super cool. It is super technical. And in that one, they actually spawn an enemy in front of you that wouldn't attack you, but it would show like little squares on the ground where the system was predicting that they would put their foot and how when you are moving positions, how it changes the dynamics of where it's going to turn so it can constantly face you. Like the system is constantly reevaluating once per, I think it's once per frame, um, where these people's feet should go which is really fucking cool. I did not realize how goddamn technical Half-Life Alex was. Um, it does that great video game thing of, wow, this looks great. Yeah, they probably did it this way. Oh no, they didn't. They built this entire new fucking thing here. Uh, like it's honestly one of the most impressive engines I've seen since, oh man. I, uh, the first time I saw Unreal Engine, like this thing is insane. So the question is, did they do it generic enough and are they going to repeat it in other games? Yeah, it's, because... it's actually, it's a tool now. It's an actual tool where you can apply different walking animations to any character and not just like point in time stuff. So it's reusable across anything that uses Source 2. Okay, good, because 
I would love to see that in more games because God, that bothers me so much. I hate the they, sliding feet, especially yeah. with yeah. stats. Like they they said that you know in regular games it's kind of noticeable, like players will notice it, but they'll quickly forget about it. It'll go out of their head. Um, in VR though, if something isn't moving how you expect, especially humans, it instantly takes you out of that experience because it's kind of a uh, an uncanny valley situation where you're looking yep. and there's just it's kind of realistic, but there's just something off with it, so it's unsettling. And not like in a good, unsettling way. And uh, this is clearly broken. Way. Yeah. Not in a, he's a good dancer, but uh, he's defying physics kind yeah, of way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll have yeah. to show you that artwork. It's the, really cool. I think I've got a save state right next to it. The dev commentary thing sounds really interesting. I would love to see more, more people do that. Yeah. Like so Game design Actually, is really, really interesting to me. Well, especially on games that push boundaries. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I don't need GTA 6 to come out with dev commentary, because odds are they're not going to be pushing too many boundaries on that game. Yeah. But, like, games where they're doing really interesting things, hell yes. Yeah. Well, not even and just... like it's one of those games. I mean, I don't mean, even mean just in the, the context of new, like, technologies being used and methods, but I mean just explaining their thought process of why they chose certain things and what problems oh, okay. there were like like what tom was saying about players not wanting to inject certain parts of their body with the the health thing like that would have never occurred to me that that could have even be a yeah. thing True. and that's really True. interesting I no yeah i had no idea like hey it turns out that uh yeah using needles in a vr game is gonna really squidge some people out like Okay, that's super obvious in retrospect. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about it until I was uh, listening to this dev comment. Or, or even, or even what you said about the the animations of the the monster thing being not aggressive enough that players wouldn't kill it and then wouldn't be able to progress into the next part of the game. Like that's yeah. there. There are lots of little decisions like that that game developers have to make that most of us don't even realize or really think of. True. They built they built intelligence into the audio system. So the audio system actually does signaling to the static meshes and other animated properties inside of the level. So uh, I, I promise I'm going to translate this. There's little plants from this alien place and they move and animate. They wanted it in time with this certain sound effect. Uh, I'm trying to say generic to avoid spoilers, but there's a sound effect that would constantly sometimes like drone in and then out. Mm -hmm. And they actually had the animation system drive that. So when the animation system detected something that sounds kind of like this, the plants would actually animate, pulsate and move and like wiggle along with that sound effect, but only that sound effect. And they're able to say, okay, something that sounds like this make this type of animation in relation to that and base like the amplitude and the sine wave of like changing the animation slightly based on the actual sound itself really fucking cool super goddamn technical and something that i didn't even know i just thought it was it looked neat until i looked and yeah sure enough it's spot on with like this musical tone slash sound effect that happens that makes me think of what Adam brought up a couple years ago with Red Dead, mm -hmm. where certain actions in the game would start to layer certain music into the, what's actively being played. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's a, different, it's a different way. It's actually the music influencing the game rather than the game influencing the music, which is yeah. very unique. But it, it kind of like smells of that same kind of theory to me. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. yeah, inversion of control on it. It's really cool. It is really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll have more here in the future. Yeah. Actually, like, if you could just clip some of that shit and send it to me, I'm kind of curious on some of that. Cause <laughs> especially I'll, on the I'll find a video of it, for sure. But yeah, the, the tech shit gets me every time, too. Um, so, I, I think that's all we got for games. Um, anything yeah. anyone else might have left off, forgot about? I'm still mm -hmm. doing mobile games. Y'all can hate me. I do. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Everything I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no. What do we got for news? Let's get some, um, into so, some news. Square Enix to make work from home permanent as of December first. Woot. Yeah, um, nice. A lot of companies starting to do this. Um, I'm curious. So, 
I know that in like the broader tech industry, work from home tends to correlate to also potentially worse work life balance in a weird way. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what that's going to do in the notoriously bad game industry. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah. Like, are they going to say, well, you're not commuting, so uh, you can put in an extra three or four hours this week, right? Yeah. Right. We, we, we only made you work 12 hours because we had to give you four hours for commute and eat. But since yeah. you're already at home, work 16 hours and sleep eight. Yeah. I, I, um, I hope not because I hate that. But <laughs> It'll be interesting. I, I think we're, we're going to see, like, in general, just across any, you know, technically inclined field, a whole lot of changes due to this year's brand of uh, its own uh, fuckery. We'll just say fuckery. And big companies will have some changes, but like your ultra huge companies may not be as much. I expect the smaller and mid-sized companies to have a huge amount of changes for this because they're not wrapped up in real estate as much so they can cut leasing costs. True. And frankly, it honestly puts your small and medium businesses in a, in a better position when trying to hire against these large places, right? Like, I'm way more inclined if a, if a job says, yeah, we're going to give you this salary. By the way, live fucking wherever. It's like, all right, fine. I will move to South Dakota to the middle of nowhere, get myself a mansion for 6 or $7 per month. <laughs> well, okay. Also, beware. Anyone listening, that is not how companies typically work. They, um, not, no. they banned where you're living, and they'll adjust your salary based on localized uh, cost of living. Yeah. Just... just for disclosure but hey, on that. if they don't, yeah. six dollar, six oh, dollar yeah. South Dakota mansions. Dude, if you can get a New York City job to pay you salary for New York City while working anywhere, <laughs> bro, move to South Dakota with a New York City salary, <laughs> you are gonna be set. It's like, well, yeah, I live in South Dakota, but I also own a complex, so. Hey, I mean, I would be down with living in South Dakota. You make it sound like a bad thing. <laughs> it's just cheap. But I yeah, mean, they've got decent internet. It doesn't really matter where I live. But yeah, um, this is gonna be cool to see. Uh, Square Enix, is, to my knowledge, has never been one notoriously bad. It's not like the Rockstar or any of them. So I don't know if this is gonna be a good indicator for us, but we'll see. Um, yeah. I'm definitely gonna have an ear out for it just to kind of well, hear how it's been going, especially this year. Cause I'm sure a lot of studios are doing that this year. I think the reason we don't hear anything about like bad work conditions in Japanese dev studios is typically in Japan's salaryman run economy, overwork is the norm, right? Yeah. Like falling asleep. They do at have your a pretty death, aggressive work culture exhaustion. for sure. Yeah, it's, it's or so I hear just, I everywhere. There, but... So, like if you if you had a, the American video game uh, economy is on top of that, it's gonna look like I don't know child's play. Yeah, I mean, and like like Adam said out, like I really don't know. It's just what I've been told and what I've kind of like read, but that's not necessarily indicative of what's going on. But yeah, it, it seems that way. Yeah. It's more of a um, just get it done kind of culture. But needless to say, uh, we'll be watching anxiously to see what happens with that because that could that could turn really bad in America. But anyway, uh, new the world ends with you game announced. Wow, I made that pause weird. They knew the world ends with you game is announced. There, I said it better. So, uh, this is actually from Square Enix. Um, this was a game on the DS. They just put out like a remastered version on the Switch. Honestly, one of my favorite uh, gimmicky touch-based RPGs on the DS. Uh, it, was a, it was a great series and that music is killer. It had like a jet grind radio type funk to it. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a new one. So I'm I'm kind of excited. We'll I've, see. I've, I've heard about the game. I've never played it. But you talked about gimmicky games. My favorite gimmicky game on the DS had to be Rhythm Haven. Yeah. Loved that game. Fuck that. I was like so Elite good. Beat Agents, which then I guess got the gameplay got stolen and turned into Osu. Because it, it it's literally the same game. It's the exact ah. same game. Hit dots, draw lines, and tap. Woo! That's it. That's the whole game. And it couldn't be better. Yeah, that's why I like Rhythm Haven. It was a little bit like different mult or mini games, but all still super rhythmic. Mm. Uh, all right. And last on the news, surprise. Literally, oh, like right. Adam and I have no clue what the fuck is going on here. Yeah, what's the surprise? Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so the the surprise is um, when you do the outro, people could uh, find things easier. Um, so 72 pin connector has been completely updated. New layouts, new everything, same old awful content. Um, so yeah, the, the site looks like uh, it was built sometime in the last 10 years instead of like 14 years ago. Awesome. Um, nice. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. After all this anticipation, we have a new website. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. Connector.com. I can't wait like, to see I, it. I'm actively going to be going there soon. Exactly. As yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, now, one thing you will notice, and uh, I, we should probably mention this on the podcast, um, the Rocket League team page is missing. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. Um, the old page was super out of date, and while we work on getting everything updated with bios, pictures, and all that stuff for the new roster, um, I've taken down the old page to avoid confusion. So, uh, yeah, don't worry. I know it's missing. I didn't mess anything up. Just want to we'll be the judges of that. It's yeah, better to be better <laughs> to not have it than be wrong. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, I'm um, glad yeah, to hear that's that. That's so cool. Tom, thank you very much. Much yes, appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and that said, um, fellas, do you guys have anything to uh, get out of here on? Or is it rundown time? Yeah, that's that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Run it down. Well, in that case, um, for everyone, thanks for listening. Um, if you're over here on our Twitch, thank you. Uh, but we do have YouTube, 72 Pit Connector. You find us over there. We have clips, random ass videos. All our podcasts are put up there, so you can always watch anything that you missed. And our Plays of the Day montage and some other things. So just go check it out. It's a good time. Um, if you're over there watching us, thank you. But Saturday night, live, 9 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. East. Damn, I did it again. 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time <laughs> is the best time to actually listen to podcasts. You can catch us live on our Twitch at twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. You get in the chat, ask us questions, get in the game, play against us. It's a great time. Just do it. If you're curious about the Rocket League team and just general happenings around us and our community and just random ass shit, we have a Twitter. We do some stuff on there. It's 72 PC underscore official. Uh, we have a Discord. A lot of cool people. A lot of unique games all over the place. So if you just like the game in general, our community is right for you. It's not just Rocket League. We're heavily Rocket League, but we're not just Rocket League. We do everything. So get there. And finally, I can do this in high acclaim and recommendation. I just gave you a lot of different sites. No one needs to remember that shit. Go to 72pinconnector.com and find all the links you ever need and more. Thank you, Tom. You got it. And with that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for you this week. That's all we have. Oh, nope. yeah. So, until next week. Game on. Bye, everyone. Bye.